Hello everyone and welcome to My Fantasy Journey, a channel dedicated to opinion-based fantasy book reviews. Today I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite authors of all time. I've been slowly getting around her works and I must just say that I've absolutely fallen in love with this author and I just can't get enough of her. Um, not only are her stories absolutely beautiful because they're so rich, detailed, lush, they're so complex and absolutely spellbinding. Um, but her mastering of the English language and the way that she weaves, um, you know, the stories together with her words, it's absolutely outstanding. She's probably the best author, you know, the best writer I've encountered on my years of reading. And I've just fallen in love with her, you know, um, and I just can't get enough of her. Uh, the author that I'm talking about is Patricia A. McCaleb. And I would like to give a shout out to the Fancy Hat Lady Reads. Kelsey, thank you so much for motivating me to read this book and making me pick it up sooner than I was intending, you know, and that I was like anticipating um, with your uh, summer recommendation video. Um, if you haven't checked out Kelsey's channel, uh, the Fancy Hat Lady Reads, you should definitely go check it out and subscribe. She does some awesome reviews and some super interesting and super fun uh, book haul videos. So please go uh, check uh, Kelsey's channel out, The Fancy Hat Lady Reads. And Kelsey, like I like I said, thank you so much for for motivating me to read this book sooner than I was that I was un intending. And I'm very glad that that you know that you did because I really like this book and I'm I'm glad I read it before you know before I was uh, planning to. So thank you for that. Um, and yeah, that being said, let's just uh, dive right into the review. So the book that I'm going to be talking about today is. The Bell at Sealy Head by Patricia A. McKillop. So I'm going to start talking a little bit of what this book is about. I'm just going to do like a very quick summary, kind of like, you know, um, kind of like brief summary of what this book is about. With Patricia A. McKillop books, it's hard for me to like describe everything in, in as little world as possible because her books are very complex and very like rich and stuff like that. So it, it's kind of hard for me to like describe everything in just a few words and you know I'm not just going to read you know like the synopsis that's in the book because that would be boring so <laughs> but anyways um so this book is about this uh this kind of like village town you know that is like a like a coastal town you know it's by the seaside it's called Sealy Head and uh there is this mysterious bell that rings uh you know during different periods of the day in this village but nobody everyone has grown accustomed to it but nobody knows where it comes from or you know or what it is they know of course it sounds like a bell but they don't know the origin or where it comes from there are stories about it but they don't really know you know and they've become so accustomed to it that for them is almost like a part of their everyday life and you know just another sound in the world um but it's much more than that and there's also this mysterious house that you know that uh that is very big and has like a lot of doors which open to this kind of like parallel house where there are knights and princes and ladies and you know and and kind of like this magical um alternate house and you know there's uh some characters you know some people who live in this uh village that kind of like come together in the end and solve you know this puzzle of what is this bell where does it come from um why is it ringing and you know uh what is the origin of this of this bell of this mysterious bell and yeah they come together in the end to like uh discover that and like um just solve this uh kind of like this puzzle and this uh, mysterious um case of this bell so that's kind of like a little bit of what this book is about I know that probably wasn't like the best summary but like I said it's kind of hard to like describe her books because they are very like complex and stuff like that so I did my best <laughs> but anyways let's just dive right into the into the review so I'm going to talk about the things that I liked um I love the mystery in this book it has like an air of mystery in it you know with the bell with all the the characters with this mysterious house with its with its opening doors and revealing like another world full of like I said of knights and princesses and stuff like that and you know the the problem solving on what is this bell where does it come from why is it ringing and you know what is the point you know 
And what is it in general? So I love the air of mystery in this book. It was really like intriguing and it just kept you like very interested on what was going to happen next. And, you know, the things that were unraveling slowly, you know, um, with the characters and, you know, the, the, the things that they were discovering and stuff like that. I, I really like that. I also loved, um, the, uh, the village setting itself and like the, you know, the, the general setting world. Um, I thought, I, you know, I think it was very interesting and I just loved the, the way that she created this, this, um, like this village, this town. I'm usually, I do not like the ocean. <laughs> I'm scared of the sea and the ocean and I, it's funny because I come from a, from a tropical island. I was surrounded by, by water, but, but for some reason I, it kind of scares me, but you know, she created this world that was this village kind of, um, that was so fun and so intriguing and so magical. And I really like the village setting and how it was described. It seemed like a place that I would love to visit because it, it's kind of like sleepy and kind of like, like a humble town, but with, with its own magical charm and mysteries. And it was just such a cool place to like explore. And I was just so intrigued with it. And it was just such a cool um, setting for the book to take place. And I really liked it. And I really liked that coastal feeling. Like I said, I'm not a fan of, I'm sorry, of the ocean and stuff like that. But I really liked the, the, like the air that she gave this place and the characteristics and stuff like that. I thought it was really charming. So I really liked that. Um, and yeah, the, the general atmosphere of this book, I, I really liked. I thought it was going to be more more sunshiny, more, I don't know, maybe it's because there was sea involved in, you know, when you think about, well, at least, uh, that's like the general thought that comes to my mind. When you think about the beach, you think about sunshine and bright, brightness and, you, you know, just like tropical and, you know, kind of like that, those aspects of, you know, warm, warmness and just like, you know, those, those kind of elements, sunny and stuff like that. But this, for me, this book had like a more gloomy, not like oppressive or anything, but, you know, along with the mysterious uh, feeling that this book gave you, it was also kind of, for me, at least, it felt kind of like gloomy, but in a really good way, like in a very like cozy way. I don't know. It's kind of weird to, to describe it, but it was like gloomy, but in a good way, like in, like in a charming way. And I really like that, like the gloomy atmosphere but that was at the same time really cool, you know, it wasn't like uh, dark or creepy or oppressive or anything. It was like gloomy, but in the fascinating and comforting way. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's how I felt about it. And I really liked that. <laughs> so something else that I liked was the characters, as always, Patricia McKillop does some really, really cool characters. In all the books that I've read, her characters are just so full of personality. They don't, f they don't feel flat or anything. Each and every one of them is is like just so unique and you know you can just like relate to so so many of them and they're just so lovable and real and i really like that um i liked all the characters in this book and you know how they each have like their own problems and how you know they're all struggling with certain things but how they all came together in the end and they kind of like became a part of that puzzle that had to be solved I really like that, and I really like the characters in this book, as I've loved a lot of the characters in the Patricia McKayla books that I've read. So that was really cool. Um, something else that I like was how unique, you know, unique this book was. I've never read a book like this or a fantasy book like this. It's, this was very unique, very, very original. Um, and I just love, like, the magic in this book, how different it was. Of course, like, I feel like Patricia McKayla is, like, a master when it comes to, like, also, like, writing about magic because she does it in such a magical, <laughs> in such a, like a complex way. You know, it's not just like magic and sparkles. It's something much more complex and much more deeper, you know, that has to do a lot with the things that are going on that plays a role in the books and, you know, that p plays a role in, you know, the, the puzzle that's about to unravel and the things that are going on in the characters. And, you know, I just love that. And yeah, I just, like I said, I just love how unique this book is and how how original it is, I have never come across, you know, it's not like your traditional fantasy, it's something very different and very well done, so I really like that also. Um, uh, something else that I, that I liked was, uh, like I said, the way, you know, Patricia, I love the way that Patricia McKillop, uh, writes, 
sometimes her books are very like complex and very dreamy and ethereal and dreamlike and you know there's beauty in that and of course I, I I appreciate it sometimes it feels kind of blurry and kind of like hard to understand in some ways not I'm not talking about this book but like some of her books um but this book was actually much more straightforward and it was much more easier to um to read it was very much more easier and you know like I said a lot of Patricia McKillop books are very allegorical has a lot of symbolism and you kind of like have to read in between the lines and kind of have to dissect things and yeah they're much more complex a lot of times but this book was much more it's probably probably her most straight from the books that I've read for now it's, this is probably one of the most I think I would say the most straightforward that I've read but without losing its essence at all and it's still wonderfully written and of course it still has like the Patricia McCaleb like you know, like, signature, the way that she writes and everything, but it was much more straightforward and much more easier to read, and I appreciate that. I do love her complex writing and kind of, like, unraveling the mysteries that she's writing about and reading in between the lines, but sometimes, I must say, it gets a little bit exhausting. For example, uh, The Tower at Stony Wood had a lot of that, and also The Book of Atrix Wolf had a lot of that, too, and sometimes I just found myself, like, just, like, kind of like, mm, okay, I have no idea what's going on, and I have to, like, read it all over again, and then in the end, it will kind of, like, make sense sometimes, and, yeah, and while I do appreciate that, I, I do really appreciate that this book was much more quicker to read, and much more straightforward, so I like that, you know, but it was straightforward, but without losing the magic of Patricia, and without losing the essence of the book, and I really like that, because it was much more easier to read, and I really appreciate that. Um, yeah, like I mentioned, the way that the characters come in, um, you know, with their different problems, but the way that they come together at the end was really cool, I really like that. Um, so yeah, those are some of the things that I liked that I could just get out of my head right now. Um, yeah, and uh, now I'm going to talk about the things that I didn't like. Um, I would have liked to explore the house more. I was left desiring to explore this, this Aislinn mysterious, it's called the Aislinn house, and I was left to, you know, I was left to, to, you know, I was left with the desire to explore it more, because it seemed like such a fascinating place, and with all its opening doors, and, you know, where it led and everything, I was kind of disappointed that we didn't explore more of this house, and while the house was nicely developed, I could imagine and everything, but I, w I wanted to explore more of this house and the house that was behind the doors, you know, that mysterious, magical, parallel house. I wanted to, to dive into that a little bit more and explore a little bit more, so that, that was kind of disappointing. It wasn't something that made me really upset, but it was something that I wish uh, I would have, you know, we could have dived into a little bit more, and we could have, like, get more details of and just like explore it more so that was something that I kind of you know would have liked to see um yeah you know more depth in this house and and in its rooms and its mystery and stuff like that so uh another thing that I didn't like um was that some aspects of the book needed more explaining and development um especially in the end I felt like, things were left, like, unclear and unfinished, because it, it ended, you know, and I did like the ending, don't get me wrong, it was satisfying, you know, and it was a nice ending, but I felt like I, like, she left a lot of things behind, like, she just left a lot of things unsolved, and a lot of things that I just, I was just like, wait, I still don't know where this come from, what is this, or what does it mean, or, you know, I was left, like, wondering, okay, what the heck, like, what the heck does this come from? Why is this there? What is, What was the origin of this? You know, and I was left doubting a lot and questioning a lot of things that were not solved at all. They were just, like, pretty much mentioned and they were developed in the book, but in the end, they weren't explained. And I, that just left me wondering a lot and wondering about a lot of things, like, uh, like the princess, you know, from the, from the alternate house, um and uh, the origins of the bell and the other people and stuff like that it just left me wondering a lot and you know it wasn't like unraveled in the end you know they had to do with the story and everything but it wasn't like solved or 
you know, it was just used in the book, but it wasn't, like, mentioned, you know, it wasn't, like, uh, we didn't get, like, a story of the origins. Maybe that would have made the book much longer, but I would have appreciated if, you know, if at least it was mentioned, like, why were they there? What was their origin? Where did they come from? And, you know, and what they had to do with, with the bell and with the things that were happening. So that, for me, felt very unfinished and kind of disappointing. Not to the point that it made me feel upset, but I would have liked to know much more about these other characters in this other world and the other things that were behind the doors and of other characters that were there. Um, you know, uh, like Miranda and... Um, and the wizard and stuff like that, they just, like, kind of, like, felt like they were there, but I don't know, and, like, also, like, the dying lady and stuff like that, I was just, like, okay, they're there, but I don't know what they're, you know, where they come from, I don't know, they just, you know, had their things to do in the book, but that's it, you know, then I was, like, left hanging, we were left hanging, like, who is Isabo, you know, who's the princess, this world, you know, it's mentioned a little bit, you know, but, like, very briefly, you know, what, how was this world created, like, and, yeah, and sometimes I was just, like, because there was, like, a mentioning about, uh, a book, and, you know, uh, about how some things were made in a certain way, I, I don't want to dive into that too much, because I, I don't want to spoil anything, but it just left me wondering, like, like, just where did this all come from, so, yeah, that was something that I kind of didn't like, how, in the end, it just literally all, ended and nothing was kind of like explained in a way you know it was just like solved kind of like the mystery of the bell and and what it was but I, like the mystery itself wasn't so much solved and and um you know they do mention like why it was there what was the bell and stuff like that but like where does this kind of like this bell you know like where the do the characters in this world come from and stuff like that so that was kind of disappointing for me but anyways, um, that was something else that I didn't like, um, and I felt like this book needed a sequel or a prequel or something that would, like I said, explain these things to us, because I just, I was just left like, this would have been so fascinating if we would have explored more of this alternate, you know, house and the characters, we would have known more of their story and some of one of, uh, you know, what the characters in the, in the alternate house were talking about why they were there, I would have liked to know much more about some of the characters in the origins of this, of this alternate house, of the bell, of this town. I don't know, I just felt like just this book, I don't think there's going to be a prequel or a sequel written ever, but I would have liked that, you know, to be the case, because like I said, this book leaves a lot unclear, and I would have liked to know more. So that's one of the things that, um, that I didn't, like also, yeah, that that some mysteries were left unsolved and it left us handing, uh, hanging, and you know, and some aspects of the book needed more um, explaining and development, um, and more like like I said, the house needed more depth and the ending needed to be a little bit explained in some things. Um, but that was pretty much the things that I didn't like about the book, and there weren't things that you know didn't allow me to enjoy this book. Um, there were just things that can, you know, little flaws that I would have liked to know more about because I did really like this book and I would have loved, I'm sorry, I would have loved to know more about this world because it was really intriguing and very, um, just fascinating and yeah, and, and it was, it, yeah, I would, I would just love to know more about it. But yeah, that was pretty much what I didn't like about the book and what I did like. So, but overall, I loved this book. It was wonderful. It was kind of like those comfort reads, you know, one of those books that you just like, you know, lay in bed and just like, uh, just get lost in the book and just like, it, it gives you like comfort. It's kind of like those comfy kind of reads, uh, while there's mystery and stuff like that going on. It's like so intriguing and yeah. And, and it's just one of those kind of like relaxing books that you read, um, you know, on your bed with a good, or, you know, with a good cup of, of tea and just, like, relax, you know, and read one of those magical books that are, like, comfortable and just, like, so fascinating and, and so much fun. Um, yeah, so I, overall, I really like this book and I'm, I'm glad, like I said, that I read it beforehand, um, because it definitely is a, a great, like, summer read and, um, 
yeah and it was it was kind of different from what i was expecting but it was wonderful i love the atmosphere and i i love a lot of elements of the book so patricia mckillop you did it again this is another amazing book from you <laughs> but yeah um that being said who would i recommend this book to if you like i said are more into tranquil kind of books you know um if you want to read something that's much more laid back something that you know has a, a good level of of complexity is that even a word you know of complex elements and uh, mystery and stuff like that and that it's very like magical and very has a lot of like atmosphere and stuff like that and you're looking for like a comfort read and something that you just want to relax and read and not go crazy with you know something that's like a you know something because this is a standalone and um yeah, if you're looking for that kind of, oh, and a very original, and a very well-written, of course, like every Patricia McKillop book is, very original and different fantasy, something that you haven't read before, I definitely recommend this book. It's absolutely lovely. And if you're looking for something that is very re uh, rich and atmospheric, I will also recommend this book. And of course, if you are a fan of Patricia McKillop and you haven't read this book, read it because it's very, very, very good. Um, and you will absolutely love it. Um... Yeah, and if you're a Patricia McKillop book uh, lover, and if you've read some of her books, and they're kind of like too complex and too, um, you know, kind of like confusing and dreamlike for you, um, and kind of like enigmatic and stuff like that, give this book a try because it's much more straightforward and much more quick and easy to digest. So yeah, I will recommend that. Uh, you know, to and to any fantasy lover, actually, because this is a, a wonderful, like, jewel that you would find. Who would I not recommend this to if you're, I guess, if you're into more action-packed fantasy with more broad worlds that explore a whole bunch more, you know, those books with maps and that are more, you know, more into, like, uh, action-packed books um, with a lot of, like, uh, you know... Uh, you, if you're more into, I guess, like, the more epic fantasies and stuff like that, and you, or you're just not in the mood for a book that's more peaceful and more tranquil and more laid back, and you're looking for something that's more action-packed or energetic and stuff like that, and less peaceful and more, like, uh, more hefty kind of books, then I guess um, I wouldn't recommend it, but I, to be honest, I cannot think who is specifically who, you know, I would not recommend, unless you're not into fantasy or you're not into, like, this kind of books that are more soft in a way and more magical and more, you know, have a, a good air of mystery and mysticism and atmosphere to them, then I guess you, you know, you wouldn't be too interested. But this is a lovely book, so I would recommend it to anyone really, and especially, of course, if you're into the fantasy genre, obviously, and just if you're looking for, like, a comfort read, or, like, you know, a, a nice, um, peaceful book, and a fun book to read, um, and a beautiful one at that, then I would recommend this one, so, yeah, what would I give this book? I would give it a four out of five, like I said, the only reason I wouldn't give it 5 out of 5 is because of those details that I said that were left unsolved and stuff like that. But that's kind of like the only reason. And overall, I love this book and I really enjoyed it. And it was really fun. It was a really fun read. And uh, yeah, and a, a very lovely one and very enjoyable. So, The Bell at Sealy Head. Lovely read. Absolutely recommend it. Patricia McKillop, you're amazing. <laughs> So yeah, that wraps up the the discussion and the review for this book. Um, I've I've come across some people already that that they've told me that they like Patricia A. McKillop. So um, have you read this book? Of course, I know that Kelsey. Um, if you're watching this, I know that you've read it and that you love it. Um, so and there's uh, I think I've come across other people have told me also about uh, that they love Patricia McKillop. So have you read this book, uh, The Bell at Sealy Head? Um, do you love it? Do you love it as much as I did? Um, or if you haven't read it, are you expecting? Uh, do you want to read it now? Are you a fan of Patricia McKillop? What books have you read from her? Um, did you like this book? If you read it, did you love it? Like I said, uh, do you do you agree with me? Do you disagree? What do you you know? What is your opinion with this, uh, with this lovely book and all those good things? Let's talk about Patricia McKillop and about this, this awesome book. So, yeah, I hope to see you guys in the comment section. If you want to join me on this fantasy journey, 
uh, you're more than welcome to subscribe. I'm going to be doing more cool review videos on really magical and awesome books. So if you want to check that out, uh, join me in this journey and uh, hit that subscribe button. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed this review. And yeah, read on. I'll see you guys on my next review. Bye-bye.